right guys this is Tyler here um, I wanted to do a uh, kind of a different video than what I've been doing um, I've done uh, quite a few videos on my record collection and stuff and uh, I thought that I would kind of do one that kind of pinpoints an artist intentionally um, not just accidentally like I did with my Mariah Carey video but uh, anyways I, and I also wanted to talk about someone who is a relatively new artist well she is a new artist a, a you know she's only been in the business for just a few years now um a, because I, I talk a lot about older artists and while i enjoy older music i do also look into some of the uh latest music and stuff that is going on in in current music there's some things of course that i it doesn't really appeal to me then there's other things that are compelling and things that are interesting to talk about and to listen to and they actually sound genuinely really good um so therefore i wanted to do a video today on Billie eilish um if if you know anything about music if you're not living under a rock if you've been listening to the radio if you've been crawling the internet you probably heard everything there is to know about this young girl um Billie Eilish, she is a um, soon-to-be 19-year-old. Um, blows my mind that she was born after 9-11, but she was born uh, December 18th, 2001. Yes, 2001, and she's nine, almost 19. Wow. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's she's a Gen Zer. Uh, she came to prominence in 2015 um, with her single Ocean Eyes, which... Um, her and her brother Phineas O'Connell, which is also her producer and helps write some of her songs as well, uh, they posted it onto SoundCloud when she was probably about, I, I'm trying to think, how old would she be in 2015? Probably about 13 or 14 at the time. Wow, that's young. Um, so, and it got really successful, and some of the people at Interscope Records actually caught wind of it and they asked her if she wanted to sign a record deal and she went along with it and so therefore she released her debut ep don't smile at me in 2017 which is a really good ep um i unfortunately don't have it on vinyl yet but i definitely want to try to get it as soon as possible because it is it is a pretty good pretty good ep and i dig it a lot especially tracks like uh, copycat and uh, of course ocean eyes and i'm trying to think of some of the other tracks that's on it. Uh, is there a song called Party Favor, I believe? Um, I'll have to look into it more. But um, then a couple of years later, she would release her debut album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go, in 2019. Um, I actually have it right here. This is the uh, Glow in the Dark vinyl from um, Target. This is basically the lyrics. It's very minimalist which I would expect from a Gen Zer. Gen, I've noticed Gen Zers, and sometimes even Millennials too, are really into minimalism. And it works in their favor. But um, anyway, so here is the Glow in the Dark vinyl. It's kind of hard to see in this light, of course, but I'm gonna try and see if I can uh, show it to y'all in action real quick. Okay, it is kind of glowing in the dark, just a little bit. But yes, this is a Glow in the Dark vinyl. Um, it's really cool. Um, it's kind of a noisy vinyl, though. That's the only thing. I kind of want to try to get another copy of this album just because it is quite a noisy album. And I've, and I've been told that Glow in the Dark vinyl is notorious for being very noisy. So with the, um, where do we, when we all fall asleep, where do we go? Um, it has been madly successful over the last almost two years that it's been out um since its release in march of 2019 it has sold over three million albums in the united states alone which caused it to go three times platinum um she has had several hits on the album the the one that is the most successful would be bad guy which went to number one on the billboard um, some other hits were When the Party's Over, which is a really great ballad. Uh, Bury a Friend, which kind of reminds me of The Doors, uh, People Are Strange. It kind of has that same sort of rhythm to it. Uh, Wish You Were Gay, which is 
kind of reminiscent of stuff like Queen's We Will Rock You or Elton John's Benny and the Jets. You're noticing a trend here, I'm sure. And all the good girls go to hell. Since, it, as of right now, Billie Eilish it has won um, a few awards. It just, in, just in the short amount of time she's been around. Uh, she won five Grammys this year at the Grammys. Um, and she was the youngest person and second person in history to win four main Grammy categories, which is Best New Artist, Record of the Year, Song of the Year, and Album of the Year. And she's also won two AMAs. She has uh, two uh, Guinness Book of World Records in, in the book, and three VMAs and one Brit Award. And as of right now, she has sold 40 million singles on uh, Spotify, streaming, through phys physical releases, etc., etc. So that's all of the uh, facts about her success and who she is. Um, so my thoughts on Billie Eilish. Um, so I am, I am 26 years old, and I would technically be considered a millennial. And, you know, obviously she is much younger than I am. And she appeals much more to the Gen Zers. Um, there's definitely a lot of themes and a lot of subjects that come up a lot within her music that would definitely correlate and resonate with a lot of Gen Z fans and some of her fans that are around her age. Um, you know, it, with, with Gen Z, they've had a lot of exposure to the internet, and this is how Billie Eilish actually got her start was through the internet. So she's definitely the... the picture-perfect image of, of what a Gen Z star should be, basically, and what they're expected to be. Um, but I think, um, you know, since I was born in 1994, you know, a lot of my friends that I've had, um, you know, some of them are around my age, which would put them in millennials, and then I have some younger friends who are in their early to mid-twenties now, and they are considered Gen Z. Um, you know, so a lot of them, they, they enjoy uh, Billie Eilish. I definitely enjoy her music. I, I really actually like it a lot. And I think she's probably one of the most compelling artists that we've had in a long time. In a few years now, I, I think. Um, as far as, you know, popular music is concerned, like mainstream music. Um, and, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of people, they'll have their, they have their own opinions about Billie Eilish. You know, it comes with any other popular artist that is very, very hot and, uh, and hot as in, like, blockbuster, like, big, huge, successful, um, you know, with artists who, who have a major amount of success, it happens with every single artist that has, that has come to prominence in the years past, and that can be anyone from, like, Madonna to Britney Spears to Mariah Carey to, um, you know, Lana Del Rey, Ariana Grande, you name it, really, Beyonce, Rihanna, those those types of pop stars, they've all had their sort of run of the gamut where, you know, when they first come up and they're really starting to be massively successful, there's going to be differing opinions from different people. Some people are going to be like, oh my God, I adore this person. And then there's going to be others that's going to be like, they are so overrated, I can't stand them. I hear their music all the time and it makes me want to scream. Um, I'm not one of those types of people. I, I genuinely enjoy her music. I like it. For me, what I get out of her music is, um, you know, it's definitely this kind of very edgy, um, it can, it can kind of have this sort of graphic, uh, like, imagery to it, especially, like, uh, horror themes and stuff, like, Bury Your Friend, that definitely has, um, a lot of horror themes to it. Uh, the video definitely... It, like enhances that that theme as well uh, so I could definitely see where she would appeal to some of these teenagers that are kind of uh, sort of sort of the equivalent of what I was you know what what some of my classmates were doing when I was in like middle and high school which would be like the emo stuff or you know maybe even grunge in a lot of ways you know but um I, I think she's a very fascinating artist, and because she is so young, you know, she has so much room to grow and, and room to expand her artistry and to, you know, become this really interesting artist and really appealing artist. And I'm really fascinated to see where she goes with her music because, 
you know, I'm curious to see if she'll kind of go and veer more towards a sort of, um, you know, this very commercial type sound, or will she kind of go out into left field? For me, right now, in, in, in this, in this sort of trajectory of her career, in, in the, in the first portions of her career, she really kind of gives me this sort of vibe that's kind of similar to people like Kate Bush or Fiona Apple. Um, and her themes are kind of similar in a lot of ways to Fiona Apple or Kate Bush. You know, these, these sort of dark, mysterious, ethereal types of themes and sounds that pop up. Um, a couple of tracks that I can think of that sort of have that similar theme to it would be maybe like I Love You or uh, Zanny, which is basically a song. It's pretty much her saying that, you know, I, everyone's having fun doing drugs and drinking and all this other stuff and you know I don't I don't need to have a Xanax to feel better but I don't I, the, the lyric goes I don't need a Zanny to feel better basically um, so it's kind of an interesting uh, song to hear someone so young sing um, especially you know at the age that she's at where you know exploration with drugs and alcohol and sex is definitely rampant especially with a lot of 16, 17 year olds, you know, that type of thing is, is very appealing. It's very interesting and fascinating to someone who is, you know, just becoming an adult or coming into the throes of an adult. Uh, and the song itself, she kind of reminds me of uh, Nora Jones on it or, or something like that. Even She kind of even evokes a uh, sort of Billie Holiday type, type sound with her voice. It, it, it's really fascinating to hear Billie Eilish sing because her voice is so um, very, very old sounding. Uh, she has a very jazzy sound to her voice. And, uh, but, you know, the music itself is very modern. It's very, very with its time. It's, it's very uh, cutting edge in a lot of ways. And it's really fascinating to think about that because, you know, most of this music wasn't made in some big shot studio, like in California or whatever, like Los Angeles, like A&M Studios or something like that. This was, this was recorded in her brother's bedroom, basically, with his equipment and all that sort of stuff. And it's really a testament to how simple and how effective and efficient recording music is now. You no longer have to have these big elaborate mixing boards or tape machines and all this other stuff that a lot of artists in the past had to have. Now if you just have a computer and you got GarageBand, you got a microphone and maybe a keyboard or something like that, you're really good to go to be honest. Um, but um, I, and I think, um, and also another, another thing that really interests me and really appeals to me is how, in a lot of ways, Billie Eilish is kind of a brother-sister duo in a lot of ways, like the Carpenters, or some some bands kind of like that, where, you know, but unlike the Carpenters, of course, the star of the show really is Billie Eilish, and while Phineas does a lot of the uh, background work and stuff, he doesn't really do too much vocal work, um, he just really is kind of behind the scenes and does a lot of the production, I think he also writes a lot of the songs too. Then I think she kind of has some input on to the uh, the songs as well, but yeah, it's it's a really interesting, um, really interesting body of work to listen to with Billie Eilish. I definitely hear um, some some uh, elements of artists like Florence and the Machine, Amy Winehouse, Lana Del Rey, Lord, uh, those types of artists with Billie. And I'm sure, you know, she was coming of age when Lord and Lana Del Rey and those types of artists were coming up. So I'm sure she probably was listening to them. And I know that she is a fan of, of Lana Del Rey and uh, Amy Winehouse for sure. Not so sure about Florence and the Machine or Lord, but I definitely hear them in her music as well. Um, and I also think she might be listening to some jazz music, maybe even some classical is, is somewhere in there. Um, and I know that she enjoys stuff like the Beatles, and she even kind of likes a lot of artists that predate her, like Britney Spears and the Spice Girls, you know, these types of artists that were popular when she was, you know, just a twinkle in her mother's eye when she was in diapers, you know. Uh, so it's really fascinating to kind of hear this sort of, um, 
this sort of camaraderie of different influences in a lot of today's artists, but more specifically in Billie Eilish. Um, some people say that she's kind of today's version of Avril Lavigne, which I could definitely see that, and I could definitely see her being sort of this uh, Avril Lavigne type artist. But what's fascinating about Billie Eilish is that she is her own artist. You know, they, they, you do hear and, and see some of the elements and influences that she's had over the years. But the crazy part is, is that, you know, with every artist, you're, you're going to hear things that sound familiar if, if you've really delved into a lot of different music. You know, sometimes when I listen to artists like uh, Tori Amos, you know, sometimes I might hear a little bit of Kate Bush in there. Sometimes I might even hear some Joni Mitchell in there. And sometimes I might even hear stuff like uh, like Prince, even. You know, some of these like really off-the-wall influences that you would never, ever guess would be first that would come to mind. But they do. They do come to mind. Um, but, you know, she's, she's a lot like some of these other artists. You know, she, the, you can't quite put your finger on... Uh, who who she who she is you know she kind of is just her own person and I really like that trait a lot I like um, I like artists that that aren't so easily decipherable when it comes to who they're influenced by you know there's too many artists and you look at them and you're just kind of like oh well they're the next Madonna or they're the next Britney Spears or they're the next Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston and you see that influence so abundantly that it almost kind of seems like they're sort of a carbon copy. I'm not going to say any names, of course, but you see it in a lot of popular music. And it's been going on for many, 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 many years now. But then, you know, you have these sort of once in a every five, ten years artists come up. And they're just sort of here, there, and everywhere. And they kind of just meld their own style into what they've heard over the years as a child into their teenage years into their adult years and sort of made it their own and have made an impact on music as a whole and I think Billie Eilish is kind of doing that a lot I definitely look forward to hearing her and I hope that you know she kind of veers more into the left than she does with with popular music you know if she has her sort of pop moment with this next album that's fine. I, I will I will kind of expect it, you know, because maybe her record company and maybe even Phineas might be telling her, you know, kind of go with this and see where it takes you. And it'll probably make you even more successful than you already are. But who knows, you know, she might kind of take a Fiona Apple approach to this and just kind of do her own thing and, you know, maybe have a couple of pop hits to her name and then, you know, just kind of just fall off the Billboard Hot 100 completely and just sort of be an album artist and ultimately I kind of hope that that's the case with her but regardless you know she's still a very interesting fascinating artist to listen to um, but um, I, I will close this this video by showing off this uh, exclusive record store day release that came out a few months ago this is um, live at Thurman Records which is the record shop that Jack White owns which has a pressing plant inside of the shop I believe it's in Nashville, Tennessee. It was recorded on November 6, 2019, and it's on blue vinyl. It's really pretty. Um, I'll show it to you real quick. Here it is. There's the blue vinyl. And it says it's recorded live direct to acetate. So that's really fascinating to hear, and it's a really good live performance. She's definitely a very lively character, and it's really, it's really also kind of fascinating to... Uh, to watch interviews of her versus the music that she makes because you know this girl she seems so full of life and she seems like she is a very lively person and just has a really great sense of humor she seems like she's a very funny girl you know and and kind of uh, seems like she would be the life of the party in a lot of ways and seems like she has a lot of profound things to say I've, I've watched a lot of her interviews and she seems very uh, wise beyond her years in, in a lot of ways and I and I really admire that in her and I think that's really cool and endearing to see with someone someone so young and someone who is just coming up into the music industry but uh, yeah you definitely hear this sort of uh, dichotomy because you know her personality is one thing and then you have this other aspect uh, to her music which is this very moody sultry uh, you know just very dark type music 
and it's just really fascinating to hear the differences, which I have heard her recent single, I think it's called Therefore I Am, which came out probably about a month ago, and it's kind of a more upbeat type sound, but it still kind of has this sort of melancholy aspect. That's that's another thing about her music is that you definitely hear hip-hop influence in her music and a little bit of R&B in there too. I know that she's a, a fan of like Kanye West and you know some of the rappers that are coming up right now and trap music and stuff and you hear a lot of trap elements in Billie Eilish, but it's kind of in this sort of condensed um, sort of, uh, I don't want to say like condensed commercially pop type sound because it's not really it seems more sort of um like it's making a statement art pop i guess you could say it is kind of art pop in a lot of ways and i consider it an art pop album because she's definitely an artsy type of pop star and i like that a lot but anyways so that is my video on Billie Eilish and I hope that you guys kind of enjoyed that. This is kind of a off the cuff video but I thought I would put it out here and hopefully I'll be able to make more videos about her. Maybe I might even do an album review video of When We All Fall Asleep or maybe even a new album that comes out possibly next year or the year after next. So it'll be really uh, interesting and I definitely look forward to seeing her grow as an artist. So. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed this. See ya. Bye.